Hey folks, Doc here. I had an absolutely craptastic day. That's right, it sucked ball bearings. Anyways, whatever, it's over. I have to survive one more day on that job site dealing with that customer. On the other hand, I gotta put up with that arsehole of a dog for the rest of eternity, it would seem. Anyways, never mind, the day's over. Came home, and it's time to give you a little bit of an update on uh, how the Fugazi project's been going. Let's have a look at her, shall we? Sounds good to me. All right, so what's new with the Fugster? Well, the last time you saw this thing, I just finished installing the LED headlights. I'm very happy with the way those came out. Awesome. They're bright, they look good, they work well. I'm happy with that. Anyways, as you can see, just as I pass by the hood, there's a little bit of a concern with the fitment. I have to play with it a little bit. It's standing away a little bit proud, but we'll get to the reason for that in a minute. Okay, so the first order of business that comes to mind, I suppose, is this foot pedal. And this, uh, this foot throttle that you see here, you may remember from my original mule. Uh, that's what it came from. Uh, and it was originally... Oh God, let me think back here. I believe it was the brake pedal from an 83 or 84 Honda Shadow motorcycle. Something along those general lines. Yeah, you'll forgive me for forgetting. I've had the piece for several years and this is not the first tractor I've used it on. But uh, yeah, it's all hooked up and good to go. I can't show you the carburetor connection right now. Uh, simply because of the fact that well, the air cleaner is on, blah, 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 make life difficult. Now, as we're dancing around looking at this thing, and, uh, you know, if you've been paying attention to the Facebook group at all, uh, you'll notice that there's an exhaust pipe there where there was not before. Go figure. And an exhaust pipe there. So you can just imagine what's going on. But I'm going to keep you in suspense on that for a minute, and I'm going to show you something else that I did to this thing that I'm particularly pleased with. I'm going to show you the reason that my hood is standing up just slightly. Oh, there's a hint. Just have a little bit of massaging to do to get it to sit right. Yep, look at that. No, it's not a diesel engine. It is, however, the recoil off the NMRL 100 clone that I put in the diesel weasel. As you can see by the level, <laughs> I still haven't worked on a hood stay. I'll get to that later. What I wanted to do to reach that point was what I did here. And you can see that I've put in these two support braces for the grill. Ever since I did the hood and grill modifications, the grill needed a little bit more stability. Um, so the answer came in two pieces of half-inch electrical conduit that I've just got bolted in through the dash structure and I flattened one end and I got it into the grill structure here. Uh, as you can see by the recoil, I've got it riveted on. Um, it went straight on. No mods necessary really. All I had to do was take the starter cup from that uh, diesel engine get it as centered as I could, uh, drop the recoil on, get that as centered as I could, and I just drilled some holes and riveted it down. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. All right, that's all fine and good, and you can see the fuel sloshing around in my tank there. And the reason that you can see the fuel sloshing around the tank there is because the tank is clean, and the reason that the tank is clean is because it's new. Well, it's used, but it's new to me. I discovered, much to my heavy annoyance, that my tank was leaking. That's no damn good, we can't have that. Anyways, I put out the call, and uh, a friend of mine, Chris, he's uh, City Slicker Builds on YouTube, I believe, and if in the process of editing I discover I'm wrong, then I will fix this, I'm sorry, uh, donated the tank to me, sent it out my way for the cost of shipping, and I really appreciate it, Chris, you saved my bacon, man. Anyways, yeah, the tank was leaking. Um, here, let me just swing this around. See where the tank bolts to the cowl? Fuel was actually dribbling out the end here. The bolt boss, ridiculous. Ridiculous. I'm just gonna take a moment to correct myself. The kind fellow that donated the gas tank to me, Chris, his YouTube channel is Redneck City Slicker Builds on YouTube. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a link to his channel in my video description. Uh, check him out, he's working on something really interesting right now. I'm not gonna tell you what it is, just go have a look. All right, so let's get to the exhaust part of the show. Getting back to it, yep, you can see that downpipe coming off the cylinder on this side. And on this side. So we have dual exhaust. Yes, we do. 
those of you paying attention to the Sprockets Garage Facebook group know that I kind of put out a little bit of a poll almost just to see what people thought. And uh, my requirements were I wanted this thing to be reasonably quiet and I didn't want stacks hanging in the air to be bashing off trees and stuff like that. And I didn't want, I didn't want a lot of bulk. I didn't want something that was going to drag on the ground, hit trees, hit airplanes, hit small animals, hit stuff. Uh, still be reasonably quiet. Uh, and where do we go from there? So a lot of you said, you know, full length dual exhaust, blah, 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 straight pipe, blah. And the only thing with the straight pipe concept is it tends to be a little bit loud. But I came up with a solution. Let me show you what I got going on here. In fact, you know what? I'll give you the audio first. Then I'll show you what I did. Check okay, this so out. what I've done is I've created a dual mode exhaust. I've got a quiet mode for when I don't want to attract too much attention. And I've got loud mode, which is almost full flow that will give me the best performance. Um, I don't have a fancy way of transitioning between the two. It's actually really simple and you might like it. First, without showing you anything, I'm gonna let you hear it. I'm gonna start and run this thing in quiet mode and then open it up to loud mode. And I'll run it and rev it in both modes. And uh, I think when I'm editing this thing together, I'll put two clips immediately side by side. Again, same camera angle, same distance. Uh, so that you can kind of compare the two. This is obviously quiet mode. God, I love that rumble. God, I love it. Listen to this. Sounds good, sounds good. So what did I do? Well, I'll show you. This here is a one and a half gallon air tank. Two of them stacked together was the old compressor I used to use for work. Now, it's this. That is my exhaust. Now, because I've got the camera pointed at it, it looks probably a little bit bigger than it actually is. It is a couple inches wider than the frame. Uh, I will make clearances with the wheels when I go to do the rear end, no problem there. Anyways, just sneaking ahead here, you can kind of see straight pipe going right into it. Right into it, and I'll take you in over top. Just nothing fancy right there, straight pipe right in. Now, the reason I don't call this a muffler I'm calling it a resonator. I don't call it a muffler because there's no baffling, there's no packing, there's nothing in it but a big open chamber. Now, let me show you the secret to this thing. When it's in loud mode, those two one inch pipe nipples sticking out are the exhaust outlets. But, thread on these pipe caps and I don't need a wrench because I don't have to be that tight <laughs> here I go goofing it off with my left hand eh? thread those on and she's quiet so where's the exhaust coming from eh, that little orifice right here and that was the fitting where the air transferred from the compressor pump to the tanks on my compressor and basically I just leave it open and when these two caps are off, I get full flow exhaust out of there. When the caps are on, it forces it out the little hole. It makes it a lot quieter. In case anybody's wondering, I drilled and tapped a hole in the bottom of that thing. And it's bolted in place. Basically where the factory hitch would be. For now, the pipes just slide into the resonator. I drilled two holes that were just big enough for the pipes to go in. It's a fairly snug fit. 
but there's no mechanical coupling between the two. And the reason that I did that is because I've got those long pipes coming out of the engine. I don't have any kind of flex coupler or anything going on. And my concern is as the frame is flexing, that might put a little bit too much stress on some components. So the thought process being is if the pipes can slide in and out of the resonator a little bit, that'll take up some of that movement, hopefully without breaking crap. So I still have to figure out what I'm going to do. I might do a couple of flexible rubber hangers just to add a little bit of support and still allow some flex. Uh, but for the most part, that exhaust system is as done as I need it to be, as done as I want it to be. And to my ears, it sounds pretty good. Now, the more astute amongst you are probably going to be smart enough to be able to ask about tuning. When you change an exhaust system on a carbureted engine, uh, quite often you change the fuel demands. Um, so because of the fact that I'm going to be able to go back and forth between modes, what am I doing about tuning? Uh, and the answer is, is nine times out of ten, I'm going to be running this thing wide open. So I'm going to be jetting it for the open, loud exhaust. Um, and if it winds up just a wee bit on the rich side or whatever with the caps on, you know, I'll, I'll bring myself to live with it. Not a big deal as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I've done a bunch of test running. I haven't read the plugs yet, uh, but from the test running I can tell that the mixture isn't too bad. I can definitely live with it. Thanks for tuning in to Sprockets Garage on YouTube. Until next time, take care of yourself.